Shabbos Kodesh. Shabbos. Tefillah B'Shem Kol Yisrael. B'Shem Kol Yisrael. Leora, it's great to have you on. Rasala. It's always, always a pleasure. Tefillah for all of Am Yisrael. Specifically, Pesach Reuven Ben Yosef Asara. Baruch Abbas Yehudis. Pesach Reuven Ben Yosef Asar, Miriam Dori Baschan Uchevet, Yonah Bas Basia. For every neshama, every, every single neshama in the world. Someone suffering physically, mentally, spiritually. So too, Hashem, my God, and God of my fathers, help me labor in your holy Torah constantly day and night in holiness and purity. Let my Torah study arouse the very roots of the souls of Israel, which stem from the thought of God. And all the Jewish souls are rooted in the letters of the Holy Torah. Bezrat Hashem Chabra. We should know being on together right now can impact someone in Australia, in Pittsburgh, in Alabama, in Iowa. You never know. Just arousing Nishmas Yisrael. You never know. You never ever know. But what we do know is it is a widespread custom in our regions to follow the practice of the most scrupulously observant, whereby each member of the family kindles one light on the first night, two on the second night, and keeps adding until on the eighth night, he kindles eight lights. So we all know. Halacha l'shem shemayim, b'shem kol Yisrael, l'kavet shavos kodesh. You should be careful that each person places his menorah in a separate place so that one can easily tell how many lights are lit that night. Right? Because we all know we're putting it by our windowsills, whether inside or outside. And if you're lighting with your friends or family and the menorahs are bunched up together. We learned yesterday that that could be a problem within of itself, right? The fact that the candles are so close to each other, it has to be a width of the finger, right? According to the Mishnah Brewer. But, but now, <laughs> Ross is on fire. Ross is on fire. I see through the screen. It's crazy. It's crazy. But someone who's coming by your apartment or house may be confused. He may think it's the fifth night of Hanukkah when really it was the second night of Hanukkah. So we have to be careful. The menorah should not be lit in a place where candles are lit all year in order to make it manifestly clear that these are the Hanukkah lights. These are different lights, different than Shabbos lights. Shabbos is inside of the inside of the house. Hanukkah is on the outside. So, Halacha, L'shem, Shemayim, B'shem, K'o Yisrael. Now we're going in. Wherever we kindle lights, whether we are in Yerushalayim, Bezrat Hashem, or in Dallas, or in Paris, at that moment, each and every one of us is in Yerushalayim, the whole city, the holy city. I told you that Tefillah B'Shem Kol Yisrael was affecting people in Dallas and Paris. That's why we're mentioning them right now. So if you find yourself in Dallas, Paris, Herzliya, you're lighting. When you light those candles, you're mamash in Yerushalayim. Wherever the highest or the lowest Yidala is kindling the lights of Hanukkah, at that moment, there are the high priests. Each of us is Aaron Akoin. 
kindling the light in the holies of the holies. So I just want to put this in perspective that the altar Rabbi, when he wrote the Tanya, right, it was a question answer guide to all of our questions. I don't know if the Tanya himself stated this, maybe other Gedolim, but it is known that every single question that we have, we can find the answer in the Holy Sefer of Tanya. Right, where Vlevi Yitzhak of Berdichever even said, how is it possible that you fit God in such a small book? But the whole goal from the Alter Rebbe's, or the Alter Rebbe's perspective was that he had hundreds and thousands of Hasidim. And we, every Yid, wants one-on-one -on -one time with the Rebbe. So as the Rebbe was getting older in age, and he was getting more and more Hasidim, he didn't have the time to be with hundreds and thousands of Yidin. I can't say he didn't have the stamina. I can't, I, I can't, because I don't know. But he wrote the Tanya. And that was everyone's one-on-one -on -one time with the Rebbe. So too with the Hanukkah lights. When we're lighting those Hanukkah lights, it's our one-on-one -on -one time with the Rebona Shailam. It's our one-on-one -on -one time with the holiest of holiest, Yerushalayim, with Arna Kohen. We feel like we have the question, we have the answers for all the questions in the world. Hanukkah is the holiday of Arna Kohen. Since the Maccabees are the grandchildren of Arna Kohen. They're the ones who found the oil in the Holy Temple. They kindled the lights in the Holy Temple. Everything is in the story. Everything in the story happened in his place, the Holy Temple. What is Aaron Cohen's real place? What's his address? When you want to write a letter to Aaron Cohen, like Ross and I are going to be doing after this, you write a letter to Aaron Cohen, care of the holiest of the holiest. Although it was his place, he only went inside once a year. Right? The Beit HaMikdash was Aaron Cohen's place the Holy Temple, right? So if we were to write a letter for him, to him, the address would be the Holy Temple, Gavant. <laughs> the Holy Temple, right? If we're writing a letter to Ross right before Shabbos, what's the address? Paradise, Paradise Road. <laughs> He's switching his address every single week. It would be Zoka. <laughs> I'm unbelievable. But he only went inside once a year. While he was there, he didn't pray. Why didn't he ask for forgiveness then? However, this is the deepest word. This is where we need to open up our hearts. Hashem opened up our hearts deeper and deeper and deeper. When he was inside the holy temple, the holiest of the holies, Aaron Cohen had a taste of the way God looks at us. When you have a glimpse of this, there is no need to ask for forgiveness. There's nothing. Can you imagine how God looks at us? We don't even know. Can you imagine how he wants us to look at each other? How we should be looking at a Ross? How we should be looking at a Nitai who just got on? Mamish with the, of the light of the Hanukkah candles. Nitai, when we look at your holy screen, we mamish need to be looking at you like the reflection of the holy Hanukkah candles. The holiest of the holy. Nitai, where are you right now? <laughs> undercover. Undercover. Woo! We have to be quiet, Fafra. Questions, comments, please feel free. Dude, when you were speaking about the halakha of lighting the menorah, when you have to distance each menorah, a certain space away from each other, it kind of made me think. It's like a very Hasidic type thought. But you're allowed to let someone else's light shine on you, but you still have to have enough room of your own just that you can let your light shine itself, you know? So just like you need to have your own certain space, you know, for continual self-growth, self-improvement, um, so too you need to distance yourself and still take in the light from others, but give yourself enough room Give yourself enough uh, space to shine on your own. Beautiful, Rosla. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Aaron Rossler thought, not a Hasidic thought, an Aaron Rossler thought. <laughs> Anyone else? Hulari undercover, Leora. Jack, I don't have anything to add, but that was so beautiful. And I also just texted my sister and I was like, shows you have to, she's working right now. She couldn't go on the Zoom. So I'm going to tell her everything, but it's amazing. Your energy is very, very contagious when you're relaying Torah. It's really inspiring to me. Oh my gosh. I think we're all going to be tearing up right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gavalt. It's really the Hevra. It's really the Hevra. And like Chaim Weinstein once gave me this advice. He's like, we have a glass full of water, right? And we want to be pouring our water, the cup of water, into other people's cups. But you need to have some left over in your own cup. Sort of like what Rosla was saying. But you know what's so beautiful about the Torah, if we could just add a little bit? That other people are adding to your cup as well. While you're pouring into other people's cups, they're pouring into your cup. Right? It's a two-way street here. Mamish, we're learning from each other. I'm just learning. Just look at Nitai's screen. Just look at Nitai's screen. Ever do we know how strong this is? These mamas are undercover. We don't even know where. Guarding Am Yisrael, defending Am Yisrael, and he's stealing Torah. You see, he had to leave. <laughs> and he came back. We don't even know. We don't even know. And Leora, we don't even know. We never know, mamas. We're, we're constantly learning from each other. Everyone's a bestseller. The best-selling book in the world. Everyone's the best-seller. So thank you, Leora. Thank you to all you guys for literally giving me energy and, and passion and literally showing me the sweetness of Torah um, more and more. Obviously, with Hashem's help, we don't even know. We don't even know. Chavra, quite, any more questions, comments before we conclude? Amazing. So I, I wish everyone health, happiness, and success. Whether you're on the cover, guarding Am Yisrael, whether we are, I just uh, reveal to the cover where you're at for a second. Mama, Jack Ryan, I'm in, I'm in Tel Aviv right now. Tel Aviv, Gaval, <laughs> Tel Aviv, Gaval, and Rosla. And Samson Schiff, back from Marv. But um, but Rosla literally just about to go and, and, and reveal the depths to Am Yisrael and, uh, and Gissin 6 and Schiff's, we all know, from Marv. So, Chavra, have a great night. We have to run. Um, but I'm really happy. I'm really happy that Samson came on. He taught us a, a million, million lessons. But if we could take one thing from Moshe, is that it's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. Chevra, have a great night.